if you're under chronic stress, the hypothalamus hypothesis, these structures will become adapted to secreting massive amounts of cortisol at any time. But here's what also happens if you're under chronic stress, repetitive stress, it goes on hour after hour, day after day. What happens is cortisol secretion continues, but norepinephrine levels start decreasing. Synthesis goes down. Norepinephrine levels start dropping. And that sets the stage for PTSD and all kinds of horrible things because when norepinephrine levels go down, you have all this massive amount of cortisol, and the cortisol will actually start damaging the brain. It'll start damaging structures such as the amygdala and the hippocampus. Neurons will start being destroyed. Synapses will start being destroyed. Dendrites will start being destroyed by all this massive amount of cortisol being secreted. <clears throat> so what we have here, persons under chronic stress, cortisol is being released, norepinephrine is being released, norepinephrine levels start going down, cortisol starts activating on structures such as the amygdala and hippocampus and other brain regions. Before it starts destroying this area, these areas will start become, developing paroxysmal abnormal activity. So we get abnormal activity in the hippocampus, we get abnormal activity in the amygdala where the person is under this tremendous stress, the norepinephrine levels have gone down, the cortisol level starts hyperactivating these structures. Previous lectures, we talked about what happens when you go into the amygdala hippocampus and you stimulate it. The person might hallucinate, might get complex hallucinations. How many here have seen charming little Disney cartoon, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Okay, just about everybody. Let's consider what happens in that, in that story. Okay, here's beautiful little Snow White, and there's the evil queen, her stepmother, of course, and uh, who's the fairest one of all? It's the queen, it's the queen. Uh oh little Snow White's growing into a beautiful woman, now she's the fairest one, so queen decides she's going to have Snow White killed, sends her out with the head forester, with the head forester with the instructions, take her out to the forest, I want you to cut her heart out, put it in a little box, bring it back to me. Bring back her heart. Well, the forester takes her out to the woods, and little Snow White, she's innocent and sweet, and just a darling little girl raised in this protective environment, and she's taken out to the woods, and the forester tells her, Queen's told me to cut out your heart. And little Snow White, well, obviously he feels a lot of fear. Suddenly she's under stress. Fear. Amygdala. Amygdala, we know, you stimulate it, tremendous fear. Continue stimulated, the person might run, okay, flint. So he tells her, want to cut your heart out and put it in this little box. Run, Snow White, run. Run. Run away. Hi. In the woods, anywhere. Never come back. Now go. Go! Go! Run! 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 Run, Snow White, run! And she's in a panic. She's totally terrified what's going to happen, and she starts running into the forest. And what happens? She's running in the forest, and all at once, the trees start bending out towards her, and they look like they have arms, and they look like they have eyes, and she's just totally terrified, and we can all relate to this, because if you've ever been out in the woods late at night and wandering, you can almost uh, sometimes uh, see things that might not be there, or, or hallucinate, or see scary things. So under terror, we know under terror, people will sometimes hallucinate. That happens sometimes under incredible, incredible terror, the person might hallucinate. We can call it a sensory distortion, or we can call it hallucination in the case of Snow White. person with the tumor, seizure disorder, electrical stimulation, they will have incredibly vivid hallucinations. They'll see devils, they'll see God, they will see angels, they'll see dress, they'll see, they'll see pigs dressed as people walking around in high heels. Incredibly vivid, powerful hallucinations. And the more and more you move towards the anterior temporal lobe, where the amygdala and the anterior hippocampus, anterior main front, 
hallucinations get incredibly more and more and more profoundly vivid as you move anterior to the temporal lobe. Hear stories, little kids being come in and say that they were being molested and terrorized by demons and devils and people were doing satanic rituals, and of course that's not true. The child's just making it all up, right? Of course people weren't dressing in these costumes and engaging in all these horrible uh, satanic rituals, but what if you're a little kid being terrorized and tortured and sexually assaulted and you're incredibly frightened and it's going on over and over, and you're so terrified, you also begin to have Snow White's type of sensory distortions. Snow White, if we talked to her later, she would have told us that there were these devils and demons out there in the forest. She would have believed that. She would have remembered it. It would have gone into her memory. But you don't know what I've been through. And all because I was afraid. In fact, little Snow White might start having flashbacks of this happening. Why might a person have flashbacks? Amygdala, hippocampus being hyperactivated. There might be structural changes in this area. In consequence, we know in PTSD, people sometimes have flashbacks. If something horrible happens to you, sometimes people will go over it and over it and think about it for day after day after week after week and have to tell everybody about it over and over and over because they can't get it out of their mind. So we can say that this area is being so activated that the person is constantly re-experiencing it, constantly undergoing the trauma, and that's stressful too. So now they're having this bad feedback mechanism. So it's almost like a downward spiral, because they're having the same, could be having similar emotional reactions. So they're having flashbacks, can't stop thinking about it. There have been studies looking at MRI of people with PTSD and it found in the right hemisphere shrinkage of the amygdala and the hippocampus. Definite evidence in the right hemisphere, which we know is the more emotional half of the brain, that these structures are actually visibly smaller.
all complex emotions, including even religious ecstasy, made possible by the amygdala. It's the seat of social and emotional intelligence. It's the main structure involved in all aspects of higher complex emotions. The amygdala is directly linked, the medial, the older, more ancient part of the amygdala, is directly linked to the caudate putamen, which is also known as the striatum, which is located in the central part of the frontal lobe, which has massive interconnections with the motor area, and also with the cerebellum and brainstem. And in its chorea, Parkinson's disease, motor abnormalities, we see disturbances in these structures. The medial part, the more ancient part of the amygdala, is directly linked to these motor centers. The lateral is more linked to the neocortex, and that's why in sharks and what have you, they don't have a, a lateral, whereas we do. The lateral and the medial amygdala, we'll just consider it together. You go into the amygdala, as I said before, you stimulate it, a certain area, and the person or animal will first feel anxiety. If you continue the stimulation, they might feel fear. If they feel fear, they might run away. How might they run away? Because it's acting on the striatum, which is involved in motor activity. Stimulate these areas of the brain. You might get kicking, you might get punching movements with stimulation of this area. So the amygdala is interacting with the striatum, and the striatum will be topic of another lecture. The worst part about it is waking up in the morning, actually having to physically will yourself to, to move your, your legs and, and, and you strain and you try, I mean, you have to think about every step. I literally have had Parkinson's disease for nine years, I live with it every day, embryonic stem cells are the best hope for our future. Charlie Nimitz, I've had Parkinson. I live with it every day, stem cell research is uh, the best hope. stem cell research. In Missouri, you can elect Claire McCaskill, who shares my hope for cures. 
Unfortunately, Senator Jim Talent opposes expanding stem cell research. Senator Talent even wanted to criminalize the science that gives us a chance for hope. They say all politics is local, but it's not always the case. What you do in Missouri matters to millions of Americans. Americans like me. The amygdala, being concerned with all aspects of emotion, controls emotional expression in part through the striatum. That is, the striatum, the caudate, the putamen, is actually an outgrowth of the amygdala. Therefore, when a person becomes extremely frightened, they might run or they might strike out, and this is made possible through the motor centers within the striatum. Therefore, under conditions of extreme trauma, the amygdala may be damaged, but also the striatum. In conditions of severe PTSD, also known formally as shell shock, that affected individuals may show gross motor abnormalities. In fact, they show many symptoms which are quite similar to Parkinson's disease. The link between Parkinson's disease and the more severe motor abnormalities of PTSD, in turn, could be directly related to the striatum. Let's consider in PTSD, when under severe stress, not only does cortisol levels go up and norepinephrine levels go down, but dopamine levels also go down. And as we also know, structures within the brain might begin to atrophy under prolonged stress. There have been studies looking at MRI of people with PTSD and it found in the right hemisphere shrinkage of the amygdala and the hippocampus. Likewise, in Parkinson's disease, we see atrophy within the substantia nigra, a brainstem structure which produces dopamine. The substantia nigra projects directly to the striatum, as well as the amygdala. Therefore, we also see reductions in dopamine within the striatum. Therefore, we see similarities in the physical symptoms between PTSD and Parkinson's disease because abnormalities in the striatum are involved in both.